We've got an earnings alert on Ford soaring after hours of 8%. Philip Bowes in Chicago with the very latest. Hey, Phil. Hey, Melissa, if they can hold these gains tomorrow and close above $10, that's a level that Ford shares have not seen since August of last year. So what worked in the first quarter for Ford? Well, North America continues to be the main story here. They made $2.2 billion in North America in the first quarter. That's Remember, they're transitioning towards more SUVs, and they already are strong in trucks. They're trying to push that lever even harder. Also, when you take a look at Ford's credit, that division Earnings up 24% in the first quarter. So Ford Motor Credit had a huge quarter for Ford. And then the China business is improving. Here is CFO Bob Shanks talking with us about what he sees in China for Ford. The Chinese economy seems to be stabilizing. We saw on an industry level the SAR about flat on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, the government has already announced some things that they're going to do, for example, a reduction in VAT to stimulate uh, the broader economy, but also our sector. And there's uh, rumors that they're going to do more. So the government recognizes the importance of this particular sector, uh, and it's possible that they'll give us uh, a bit of help and stimulation as the year progresses. Uh, but overall, I think we're seeing uh, a more stable environment than perhaps where we were a few months ago. Two other notes, Melissa. First of all, Ford affirming that it expects to keep its dividend at 15 cents a share for the remainder of this year. And the conference call, which starts in a couple of minutes, that'll be key because I think analysts want to hear what the tenor in tone is from CEO Jim Hackett. Some of the past calls, he's been very vague in terms of where the company is headed and how the turnaround is taking hold. Let's see what he has to say to the analysts about the first quarter and going into the second and third quarter with the turnaround. Yep. Phil, thank you. Phil LeBeau in Chicago with the latest on Ford. We should note the GM is trading higher by 2% in the after-hour session. But Ford focusing on that, that's telling a whole different story than a lot of other companies reporting today when it comes to China. Intel CEO, for instance, we told you moments ago, saying that the company is seeing a dramatic slowdown in China. That stock's down around 8% after hours. Meantime, industrial giant 3M posting its worst day in more than three decades since Black Monday, 1987, in fact, wiping out all of its gains for the year after the company slashed its 2019 guidance, announced plans to lay off 2,000 workers, the company citing weakness in areas like China. 3M shaving 200 points off the Dow today. So who's telling the real story behind global growth when it comes to these stocks? I would submit it's 3M. I, I mean, you're talking about it. Well, I, I, that would be my view. I mean, you can talk about the consumer. I mean, I never underestimate any consumer around the world's want to spend money. Doesn't mean they should be. When you look at a company like 3M with that kind of with that kind of quarter, it makes you have, you have to ask yourself, what are they seeing? What's really going on? So, in my opinion, 3M tells the real story. I I, I think both can be the real story, right? We talk about different consumers in True. China. Whether right. uh, 3M, some of the some of it was self-inflicted, but as it relates to Ford, I mean, good for them. I'd much rather, and I do own GM. GM Finance, that'll be good for them. GM doesn't have Europe, which has weighed on Ford. GM does have a big North America business. It does have a better balance sheet, and the valuations more attractive. <laughs> but Ambassador, when you take and a look at China, China and we see that the turn in the data that, that we have seen recently, which companies do you think tell a better story? Um, I, I think the industrial companies have a cyclical issue. I think the tech companies have a strategic uh, political issue. And, and I, I, there's no question to me that made in China is an issue for all the big U.S. Uh, tech companies. I think you think about Ford, you think about GM, they've been very successful in terms of partnerships in China. So uh, I'm not surprised to hear that that still works. In fact, on the industrial side, I think there's a big, warm uh, dynamic between U.S. companies and China. Uh, when I think about Ford, by the way, the fact that Ford Motor Credit is a driver for earnings, that doesn't make me excited at all because that, that is a business that could turn on you in a hurry. And if you're worried about the credit cycle um, or somewhere around the corner, that's a problem. The Rivian investment is something else that people like to talk about with Ford because it gets them into that EV. They're lagging their peers. They're lagging GM. But that adds multiple to this stock. Uh, you know, I listen to these companies whose stocks are down 10% on, on bad results and they're blaming China. And I'll tell you why, because we know what's happened for those green shoots, for that turn in the Chinese data. When you look at the credit expansion, you look at everything that China has thrown at it. You look at the change of our Fed. You look at what Europe's done. We went from global tightening to global easing in like a six-month period. So the fact is that they've, yes, the data's going to look less bad, okay? But these companies did are still... Did you the term green shoots? Guy, did you catch that, by the way? I, I did. did. He's allowed to that? in that context. I hate that. I listen. in a derogatory just, way. Yes. He wasn't <laughs> just listening. In a snarky way, okay? Yes. My yeah. point is, is that I think we're going to see so more reactions like this when people are honest about what's actually going on.